Well, Dusty Griff runs across the desert, and Martin Broadcoak is following right, nipping at his heels. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, RPG Limit Break Free Enterprise fans, welcome to Game 2 between Martin Broadcloak and Dusty Griff. Uh, Dusty Griff up 1-0, but it was a very close match last time, and it looks like, well, we have an incredible starting character. Um, joined at the booth by Solaris. What do you think about uh, what we can see so far? Hi, I'm excited. You know, it's funny, the desert metaphor is so fitting because we have our hypo resident Edward to start the king of Dempsian and we have music as an objective it's uh, thematically perfect I'm feeling great this is going to be a real hype matchup I mean really all of these matchups at this point honestly and even before this point but at this point in the tournament like every single matchup is uh, close between very skilled runners and very hype. Yeah, you do not make it into this top eight by accident. These flags, really fun, really creative uh, flags that, that you're going to see the runners with only the, the four characters. Uh, there's limited loot. There is limited money to spend in the shops. So it, you really get to see the creativity, but, but anyone who's made it this far as it is a very you know, a very similar chance. Uh, it's anybody's race from the onset. Uh, but with that Eddie, probably, uh, oh, I'm kind of hoping he, we pair Eddie up with somebody also weak just to see what both of these just phenomenal runners act, you know, do with a start like that. Yeah, certain starts definitely, they change how you want to approach your early game. Uh, but I want to go back for a second about uh, the way that these seeds make you kind of find ways to get through them when you're limited on resources and so many vectors and i think what's really interesting about the runners that are still left in the tournament is um you have just varying styles of play that have emerged really in general in free enterprise but also in this flag set and uh it sort of shows and i think that dusty and martin show a, uh, they're a good showcase of two different mindsets about how much you want to loot and how much you want to find power early and the kind of characters that you want to lean on. Now, of course, it's going to depend on seed and seed. You know, it's context based, but uh, these are two runners that have two very different philosophies about how to run free enterprise. And I'm just really excited to see how that plays out. Yeah, Dusty, a former champion, uh, very well known as a, a difficult opponent. And OK, power, power overwhelming to start power underwhelming <laughs> there's the weak start you wanted also the twin harp is in hand immediately that is an objective we're clearly not going there right away but at some point we don't have to worry about that objective this is not the start that you want however one of the things I'd be wanting to do pretty quickly, maybe not immediately, is to look at the equipment because we have the Neki flag on. Edward could start with a Dancing Dagger. Dancing Dagger is powerful enough to get going on its own. And immediate divergence here. Dusty wanting to raise the Hovercraft, which you're guaranteed to have to do. You have to trade away both tails. Wants to get the loot Dancing Basement first, and then probably we'll go check the freebie, which Martin's doing right now. This is the freaky item. Yeah, Dusty, if I were to describe Dusty's play in Free Enterprise, it is methodical and absolutely devastating to try to compete against. Uh, he is maybe or arguably one of the one of the two or three best run buffers of anyone in this game. Uh, he's he's known to want to loot a fair amount more early than I would do, than a lot of runners in this level would do. And this is why maybe you want to go check. <laughs> yeah, this is the one. Wait, probably the only of not going. And actually, this happened so quickly, I didn't get to hype y'all up for rate that treasury. If it is playing and we're talking over it, I do apologize. The treasury was a lot of money. I don't think I saw something. Did you catch a piece of gear that we cared about? There was a to bow. Get this pretty going. It was either a samurai or an elven bow. And then, yeah, that was my only takeaway was if there was a Gungnir spear, if we happen to find a cane, and then, yeah, money, money. And money is at 
Money's at a okay. Elven bow. Thank you, fiery blizzard. Uh, particularly with that porum, Eddie. It, a bow is is up there with the dancing dagger for me. Oh yeah, an elven bow, which has. Uh, you either care about the accuracy or you care about um, the strength of certain bows. When you have a Rosa who can aim and you don't care about the accuracy, elven bow is a very good early game bow because it has great accuracy on it. You really just need arrows. It's not like, it's not super powerful, but like, it'll do in a pinch. Like, you could kill on a glass hat. That and the protector. This is the most There's defended a ninja hat. Edward I have ever seen. And Martin has put all of it on that bard. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. I, I would be 50-50 here. I would actually maybe consider Forum as the one I would be dumping all of my priority things on, but then you have that ninja hat for Porum. So she's, as far as early game goes, that's a, a plenty of defense probably for these opening checks. Yeah, I'm with you on, I, I think I would have put all that stuff on Edward, I mean on Porum. However, it will suit Edward just fine. And uh, if we talked about uh, life potions and star veils, the Troya shop here, these are very nice to see. We're gonna get the other item kamikaze shop. switch Check here too. It, you know, this is probably it, everyone has their own preference, but I like having one or two kamikazes. You have a required harp. Uh, it's a great way to maybe eliminate some characters or maybe go for a crumble skip. But it, it's all a money thing as well, because you saw Martin didn't have enough money to buy any kamikazes, and Star Veils are probably more of a priority. But yeah, kamikazes are super useful. Uh... You can also get some good crumble skips if you are good at counting boss hit points because when you use a kamikaze on a boss that would crumble, which is the four elements spots, um, have a crumble animation when they're dying. If you get the killing blow with a kamikaze, uh, they don't crumble. I don't actually know why, but you know, it's a really nice time save. It's a, it's a cute, cheeky way to save time. Yeah, and if you miss it, you probably ended up knocking off someone like Sid anyway, so it's... Also, really... I am... F <laughs> I am forgetting, I guess, two things. The element spot, I believe, also has a crumble, and uh, Zoromas. Yep. Uh, and we are going to get our character checks. These early characters, great gear for both Eddie and Forum, but I'm <laughs> immediately looking for someone else to put it on. I don't think that's going to do it, though. Okay. Uh... <laughs> Martin is making a face right now. <laughs> Let's guarantee it. One, it's Tella. I mean, Tella's nice. But two, it's this evil wall. In order to get the Tella, where you've got two people that just swung uh, whatever staves they're wearing for n for no benefit, and Edward, who just ran with his uh, elven bow fire arrow swing for 120 damage. We do yeah. have these J items, and Martin's like, yeah, I need to get out of this fight like yesterday. Time to cash them in. It's better to cash them in early, honestly. Yeah, and I, I appreciate the, you know, I'll take a swing, let's see what happens, let's see how much damage this Eddie's doing so I get a baseline, and then the immediate, okay, not even remotely close to enough damage, let's switch this up. Uh, but and, and now you got, you've got a couple more levels, which is also a convenient thing to have, but still power underwhelming right now if you're if you're these two runners. Power underwhelming, but that Tella does put darkness in mind, and it puts uh, doing a grind at the... You could do the D-Machine in mind. Like, that is a, an open thing. It depends where darkness shows up, and maybe a little bit on that fourth character, because Edward's probably not the, the, you know, the power spike through levels party member that you want. Um, yeah, the, the but... spoon flag is on, but other than that... Yeah, I mean, if you get the spoon, it's amazing. The, the, the spoon has actually, the spoon has done incredible things uh, on very particular seats uh, for runners, and it's definitely for me in practice. And now that Martin has the exit spell with Tella, he is permitted to now go and take on Antlion Cave. Uh, this is not a real check until you have the exit spell. It certainly saves a lot of time. Oh, and you know those J items? Okay, so oh. this is the Baron Guards, who are technically mages. Martin realizing he has an Elven Bow. Not doing enough damage, though. Even with that mage weakness. 
Yeah, on this episode of Reasons That Eddie Frustrates Everybody, just rolling probably just underneath. If Eddie gets one more swing, I'd, I'd be curious to see what kind of damage we get on this one. I think he'll get it, and it was lucky yeah. that he got that, uh, well, it was lucky that he didn't get size, but that's a one in three. You just have to avoid that situation. Well, I was wondering if Eddie had deliberately low check. rolled that first one. Yeah, here we go. You got another chance. I, I mean, we have Zot eventually. I don't know when you feel comfortable with this team taking Zot, depending on who's in Baron in. But uh, there's characters. There are more characters available. But right now, Martin's showing off the cutest character in the entire game, and that's the, when the piggy spread runs sideways. Martin immediately checking that package. I don't blame him. You're at low power here, and... While it's not an objective, the burning the, vill uh, the village down often is an objective. Getting a shop check here too, just kind of double duty. Always nice to see, mainly a cursed ring. It's also nice if you run into like a uh, boomerang, lit arrows. Actually, that Lilith rod would have tempted me too for Tella. If he doesn't have one already, he might. And we see a Palum. Okay, all right. Well, Martin's... Martin's going to put that in the back of his mind, and so will Dusty if he runs that way. Dusty, meanwhile, ran straight to Fabul, uh, continuing down his checks. Yeah, Palum, is, or, uh, yeah, Palum would give you the twin magic. Palum, you would be able to get Virus on relatively quickly. I kind of like this play from Martin. I thought that was going to be, look at me, I'm so strong, I'm going to go take on... Uh, I'm going to go take on Baron in with the weakest team you could possibly find. And instead, it's it was a clever little character check trying to determine, you know, is this Palum going to be an asset to my team or can I sort of put it off? And I agree with this choice from Martin. Yeah, 100%. Uh, twin magic will accelerate the early game. Like, yeah, the J items that we had, very good use of them from both runners to get through the first couple of, you know, the first item check the first character check but they're very limited and we see dusty running against kanatsu now has some thor rages but uh kanatsu this is what an 1800 hit point spot um it i don't think the waves are extremely dangerous since they're hit point based but yeah. it's still something like he has to kind of manage the fight and use the thor rages and find the right character to swing whereas martin when he comes here he can just cast twin magic or bluff twin magic, and the fight's just gonna be done. Yeah, if anything, I think Dusty just threw those out too early and actually wanted the damage because yeah. of the, the weakness from Keinatsu as we see the ice cast come out. And I think, I mean, you can just burn all the Thor rages because you don't need them anymore, really. So I, I don't hate throwing them out. I'm sure Dusty kind of wished that he had timed that out slightly better. But then again, with Dusty's run buffer, I it's it's hard to gauge when things are supposed to happen. Yeah, but it, it goes back to my point that damage is a bit of a concern against this, this cannot, so it's a bit slow yeah. because these characters are just, you know, not the powerhouses that you want. Now, and going yeah, back to that pal... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to go back really quick to that palamus I was saying about putting in your back pocket. Um, I didn't think about twin cast, which is why you'd really want the palam now, also experience. But the other thing that's on the table is that if you get a darkness crystal, you have a D machine available, you have mages... And I think that Baron in shop was in that Baron in character check was in part wondering, you know, what is my final team going to be? Because even if there was another Palum there, I wouldn't have been surprised if you took the Palum at the package to then grab the Palum at Baron in also. And then, you know, that's a kind of a final game party right there. Yeah, it's good to know. Uh, I would assume that, that Yang is going to replace Edward. Them. At least in the interim. But there's also, I mean, you have Zot. You already have the harp. You're going to be over there with that required harp. Uh, either of you, I mean, we, we might not have our underground access until maybe after that harp. We have more characters to see. but So it might be it might yeah. be the hook that came from Fubble Defense uh, over on Dusty Griff's side. That is a character check, and it's a fairly quick one because at least you'll be able to exit and see the boss we'll see if dusty wants to run there immediately or if he'll keep going down key item checks that might be our underground access though it could be knowing dusty this is also a, a chance to cheekily loot sort of your first available chance 
excluding Evelyn Castle, at much better gear than what you've been able to get, excluding that yeah. treasury, for example. So it, I would run in here, start grabbing stuff. I hope I don't have to reset out of the stale men. And definitely the, the character check is something that could be of huge value, considering something like a cane right now, particularly with that rune axe, would be a game changer. Well, there it is. Yeah, and finding the stalemen immediately means Dusty will be able to loot pretty much everything Cave Evelyn with impunity. Realizing that he has charm arrows says I kind of want to take this on. Now, <laughs> this fight is always... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, if you charm one stalemen into punching the other to make it fall asleep, maybe this is not the most dangerous trap chest in the game. I was about to say this trap chest always destroys me, but... Uh... What Dusty just did was amazing. <laughs> yeah, these steel men do, do not fight fair. I've I've lost pickup races maybe 14 minutes in because I, I was like, okay, I can I can win this fight and then I'll lose and I'll immediately go right back and lose it again. Uh, but good on Dusty, a little bonus XP and a, and a chance for maybe a good loot drop, best loot drop. Meanwhile, Martin is thinking, I want to go to Ordeals immediately. I have this Tella. I would like to get his spells online. I'm not even going to do for bull defense for the moment. Unfortunately, it might be a bit of a punish because that hook could lead to a character that could lead to power, but Martin has the power with the twin cast, I'm realizing as I say this. So this play makes a lot of sense to me, uh, especially if Ordeals just happens to have a magma key or a hook, because he doesn't know, or darkness. Uh, if he gets darkness, he's set immediately. So I like this play a lot from Martin. Yeah, should have the power to get through. Shouldn't be an issue maybe in that regard. I am going to question uh, just you would really like the turn order to be different than what this turn order turns into here. Because Porum has some levels and Palum has none, you're not going to be able to do the bluff into the twin cast. But right now, it's not going to matter, and we're, we're going to get some levels on Palum. That's definitely true. I'm, I'm actually not sure. Is there a way you can get Palum to go first, given Edward's agility? Uh, not until... It, not unless you had, like, a one agility. Or at least color. over Porum. You would, you would basically need everyone to be RA1. And just based on the fact that Porum already has some levels, it's going to be really hard. Uh, yeah. You could maybe put the ninja hat on Palum. I, I'm not entirely sure the difference, but Pal or Porum ends up with just more agility early than Palum. And while we were talking that out, Dusty has found sirens in the Cave Eblin shop, that, that shop being guaranteed to have two Tier 5 uh, useful items, like Bacchus, Hourglasses, etc. We see a blue robe is the Rubicon spot. This is the, the main fight to get through the hook route. Could be free in a water hug. It could be the Elk Gauntlet, which is probably easier than a lot of bosses that could be there, but not one you really love to see. Sid is also an okay character to find if we have uh, like an Ogre Axe or Poison Axe. He's a very appropriate carry for the game, or an Earth Hammer. Um, but yeah, it, we it's... saw Dusty find a Rune Axe. And I, I like this Sid right now. Particularly, like you said, early game because we have a harp in hand already. We have Zot. So, a Zerker Sid with a Runex for me is probably good enough for me to feel comfortable taking both those spots, just given the amount of gear that we picked up already. Yeah, meanwhile, so much going on on screen at the moment because this, <laughs> this is an Ogo Foot Pogo fight at the back attack. Palum uh, getting knocked down. Kinda not great. This Ogo's maybe going a bit faster than Martin would like. Getting to pick the Palom back up, but the big wave comes out again immediately, taking out 50% of everyone's max hit points. Palom going down again. Fight not exactly going the way he wants. Yeah, this is... This is one of those that, you know, you can get through this, but it's, it's another one where the question is... You know, everyone can get through this eventually, but how much faster may or may it not be for Dusty, just considering the fact that she's got that Sid with the Runex right now? 
Well, and I want to point out something chat mentioned. Apparently Martin, and I missed it unfortunately, but apparently Martin twin cast and it just flat out failed. There is a 1 in 256 chance for twin cast to just not do anything. You are almost we, never see it. Are we sure we haven't used up Palum's MP? Uh, they just cast Comet, so yes. But it depends on the twin that, that does the cast, right? Because I think Porn was the one who made that cast. I don't know what her. Uh, You'd have to peek and the, see the. Yeah, that's the, the other way you. Yeah, yeah, that's the other way you can fail twin cast. And no, she cast twin cast. So. Well, well the damage didn't know comes they out. Oh, goes down. A lack of MP. They can. They can, and maybe they just both use MP. Actually, I think that's actually how that works. In chats, uh, giving us huh. the knowledge, they both use the MP. Yeah, there. I, <laughs> I only know that twin cast can fail because it's happened to me exactly once, and I was so utterly confused <laughs> until somebody explained to me. Oh, twin cast can just fail. Yeah, I've. I mean, I've had, you know, curse stringed anchors miss life casts. I've had heroin rope forum miss berserk cast, but. Never miss a twin cast. Martin's saying, I don't need to save after that Ogo Pogo. I'm pretty safe against most bosses. And this is the Darkness Crystal! This. <laughs> okay. Ooh. That is. Wow. Okay. That is enormously huge. We have the potential for incredible divergence here because Dusty Griff did the bull defense and got the hook and was able to buy sirens. We might be staring at a hook route. It depends on what's left on the overworld. We have Zot and we have Twin Harp to do still in the overworld, but there's a there's a world where Martin just says, all right, I got darkness. I know where my characters are. I'm going to go get that Yang and I'm going to go D-Machine immediately. Yeah, there's even a chance of heading up to the moon, checking the moon character results in the play. That character as well, yeah. Two characters are in play. Uh, you... I'm not sure... You know, Martin, at this point, school defense probably isn't maybe my highest priority, even though... Exactly. You might want to know if it's a magma key or a hook route before you make this decision. would be the only reason I would consider carrying on with my checks before I go to a D machine. Yeah, it, 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 that's exactly my point. I think... Given that Darkness is right here and Martin ran straight to Ordeals, uh, he's highly incentivized to not do any further checks and get his party going because he knows where his endgame party is. He might not even check the Lunar Dias because he knows that there's a Yang just sitting there in Baron Inn. And Yang is a great party member with levels. Yang is also really good Val insurance because that's somebody who could berserk against Val in many endgame spots where you can't cast spells against her. Yeah, certainly. It's it's one of the more popular and one of the the most logical pairings to have if you're going to do something like a D machine because you do have that. Uh, you, the Yang is the Yang is your security. The Yang is the guy you can throw the Star Veil on and reflect spells off against Z. So it's it's definitely it's it's a hundred percent. A choice that I I would understand Martin making, and I'm I, I mean I'm a hundred as a, as a commentator I'm super for it just because I just knowing what Dusty has I don't think it's in the cards for Dusty right now. Yeah, yep. So Dusty, um, I would say as a runner probably not inclined to do that versus being methodical about checking all the overall checks if he has enough power to do so. But also Dusty knows where the hook is and knows that there are sirens. Now, I guess the one the, 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 the one wrinkle about what I'm talking about is that we know it's a hook route, probably, but Martin doesn't know that. Martin doesn't know where underground access is. Um, heading to Troya, though, remembering that there were Aether 2s there for sale and running straight to Baron Inn, this is... We're going to get a Deem Machine. I can almost guarantee that's gonna, what's going to happen right after this. Oh, yeah, Martin did not stop did not stop a parent in and, and take this to see what the objective or what the key item might have been first went and bought those ether twos fully committed this might be a moderate roadblock we'll have to see Arkham's at the uh, baron in two spot is 
certainly a roadblock. This is about as bad as finding evil law. It might even be worse if you don't have a way to deal with them. But, and flare damage is split. That glass hat is good, but Edward's the one wearing it. Yeah, we are gonna need. Is one of them just get one charmed? more charmed. Oh, is it charmed from Edward? I think he just so. punched himself. That's nice. All right, now we're able to get Toad out. All right, this fight's for now. And again, just as far as the divergence goes, if I'm dusty, I have Berserk. I have this sit on my team. I can definitely feel confident enough to do the music check into the Zot check. So just yep. by the choices we've seen right now from these runners, one is presented with a, a fairly straightforward choice if, if you are looking to D machine, and the, the other spoon. one is presented with. Oh my wow. God, that Yang! We got the spoon. What does Martin do? Oh, this is such a hard choice. Okay, <laughs> okay. I respect it. We're already committed to a D machine. You don't has, yeah, has the grind already really set need, up. You don't really need Edward. I mean, Edward is great. What Edward is really great for with a spoon is not doing a grind or doing like a little bit of a grind. Yeah. Because he's basically a souped up Zerker. This would, that would be a decision that might, that like you're saying, it might push you against the D machine. Knowing it's, you're going into hook route, but then you, you can start making checks. You have a good amount of gear. You have a glass hat for your glass cannon. And this is this is going to be some party divergence. I'm curious to see what, what Dusty's plan is once he sees that spin. Yeah, and I think thinking it out, I mean, when you're doing a grind, Edward's, Edward's a liability. Edward is, at Zeromus, a nuke magnet like the counter nuke magnet every, like practically every single time uh dusty however has pretty good incentive i think and i do know chad Take had pointed out and yeah it says yeah. no to the young chad had pointed out that uh martin did find a cat claw in the chocobo forest so not saying a singular cat claw you know holds a candle to the spoon but you at least know you have a decent amount of gear that you can throw on Yang, where the damage differential versus the ability to keep your the potential Zerker you need alive is is really curious with the Spoon Flag. Yeah, uh, but but if anything else, it presented Martin with a choice he he wasn't expecting to make, and I'm not surprised Definitely. that he chose. Yeah, to, I'm not surprised he chose to get rid of Edward. The other option was to get rid of Talon, as Chat points out, and go with Zerkers, but eh, Nick's pretty good when you do a D machine. We're seeing the divergence. Martin took one or two encounters outside of Baron because that's the start of the D machine manipulation. What that means is that we're manipulating the encounters. You do a reset, a hard reset, and then you have a chart you're looking at while you're lo looking for encounters to tell you that on the next encounter in one of two rooms on the giant, you're guaranteed to get uh, the fight that you can grind off of. Yeah, possibly Meanwhile, asking if the, the steps were correct. I, I, I just, I, I, it looked like he found his encounter really quickly, which is at least good for setting yeah. up that manip. Uh, but go ahead, Solaris. Oh, even if he, um, I'm just so excited of doing so much talking here. Um, <laughs> uh, e even if Martin finds the wrong, uh, Minep is actually something that happened to him last seed. You can always redo the manipulation of the giant. So it, it's not like the, the, the end of the world. Um, of course, I thought you were butting in to point out what was happening on the, with the dusty left side, side of the screen. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that, that is really where I was going, because this is the divergence, right, that we were talking about. Dusty even before the spoon had the power to take on this twin heart, but now it absolutely has the power to take uh, his melee combatants and just run at the twin harp and then do Zot immediately afterwards. Speaking of running at the twin harp, Dusty's like, we, we got viewers, we got viewers here. I'm not going to take a save. I'm not going to play this. I'm not going to play this easy. Are we going to get that kamikaze? There we go. And... As we're having this cutscene, just quick shout out, Xenocat. Uh, this could be a Xenocat song here. Uh, they are our free streamer tonight. And Rybon, sandwiched between uh, matchups with Moonblaze Wolf, is 
pushing all the buttons for us. Thanks to both of our behind the scenes members as well. And thanks, of course, to PK. And I guess I'll shout myself out. I'm, I'm all right. Uh, we got well. Speaking of Xenocat, here's some music, possibly from Xenocat, for y'all to enjoy. Well, and that is an Artemis bow. You know, it's not the worst the reward. Yeah, I mean, it, it's an objective, so you're... I'm never too mad when objective spots just give me a decent pier of piece of loot, so, like, I had to do it anyways, at least earlier game. Yeah, it, it's required. It's, it's the weapon that's sort of the thing where you go, okay, once again, something you could have given to me 14 minutes ago <laughs> that would have actually served the, like, the party. Dusty doing a great job of showing off the absolute raw power that Edward manages to possess in this in these flags with the spoon. A consideration I hadn't considered for, for Martin, though, is uh, you have to leave Eddie in the front row all the time, don't you? You do. Uh, however, they... Well, that treasure didn't have great offensive gear for the party, it had that glass hat and a protect ring. I mean, if you're going to do anything to protect an Edward that isn't an adamant armor, a glass hat is a pretty good choice. It's still not enough on the moon, and I think that's a big part of why Martin was like, nah, I'm good without the spoon word, but it's absolutely, like, a glass hat is perfect for all the early game stuff that Dusty's doing right now. Yep, and Martin... Working through this the machine fight, uh, I, I really enjoy this. It wasn't something I had seen before this tournament, I don't think, using the Lilith Rod on the Searcher, and the Searcher basically goes, hey, don't take my 1 MP. <laughs> That's my 1 MP. Fight this, fight this angry. Oh, Dusty finding uh, Golbez at Mega Sister's spot. This is kind of a nasty spot to find Gobos. Edward, however, makes it pretty palatable because he gets to hide and he's the spoon word, so he's the damage on this party. Uh, the spot has low magic attack and high health, which tends to make Gobos very annoying to fight, uh, considering he only casts spells and you really want to be done with him as soon as possible. 
yeah, this will give you an extra character alive. And depending on the timing of unhiding Eddie, you can hopefully get two turns before Golbez's I'm gonna start using spell script comes in. Because we still got we gotta get a wall up on him if he's gonna be there we go. Yeah, I think being pretty all this. fast. Yeah, Edward being pretty fast helps a lot. Basically gonna solo this fight. Good Sid Zerked, and Sid might survive a spell. Maybe more if he's wearing like a protector ring or the Dragoon armor, but. Yeah, this is this is 100% fine for Dusty. It's, it's, it's going to be all Dusty for a little bit longer here until. Okay, so so Solaris, here's my here's my question. You have Hit me. you have required Crystal Sword Alter, right? And Martin doesn't know it's a hook route, and it might not have gone incredibly well for Martin. I, I believe in their last race, but. If you go and you full clear the moon, you get that crystal sword knocked out. Uh, post D machine, I guess my question is, when you find that hook, are you, are you gonna go immediately down that hook route, knowing that Dusty probably went down that hook route, or are you gonna go, I'm gonna take my power overwhelming to the moon? It's actually kind of hard to answer. I always feel like that's kind of a coin flip question. But I, when, I you agree have with you, the, when you have the power to take on the moon and you want to force divergence, uh, going to the moon before the hook route would be the play that's more likely to force divergence. I think Dusty would be less likely to take that option. And if that's the mindset you wanted to be in, that would be a good reason to go down there. However... Uh, I don't know, these two runners uh, in their last match basically showed that they were incredibly even matched in in, in execution. So, it, the, yeah, honestly, fine for me. Possum in chat saying something, but we'll get back to Possum in about five minutes when his internet comes back on. Um, see, my only thought right now is there are four key items out there in the ether right now, and you don't have any of them so a rush underground if i had sealed cave uh you know if i had two of the rat two of the tails to turn in if i had already done baron you know right now we don't we don't know where any of the key items are and that sort of makes me at least maybe justify slightly more wanting to just say okay let's let's roll the dice maybe i pick up a magma key and if i pick up luca rat or pink or baron then I feel then I feel pretty solid about the play, right? Yeah, I think what it really comes down to when you go to the moon on these flags that are such high completion is how is this calculus you're playing of how likely am I to full clear the moon? And a lot of seeds end up playing out where you end up full clearing the moon because the moon had a Baron key or a Luka key or whatever that led you down, you know, some further Earth chain, and also the earth had, you know, a couple things that you needed as well. So a moon first play isn't that bad in the sense that if you had to full clear it anyways, like doing it now maybe ends up being better for your routing than doing it later. But it's just, it... I like having the information from the earth checks, but obviously you're at a point where you don't know that. So it, that, that's why I feel like it's just a coin flip for me. It's just like, you don't know. I mean, while I agree, I, I just like making the contrarian argument because we get to sit here. Oh, yeah. And then if it does work out, I can just be like, ha, see, I was right. Contrary me all the way. <laughs> That's not how that works, but sure. That's how it works now. Uh, Dusty, through, through the fights. As. Wow. So speaking of things that want to drive you underground, there's a Luka key from Zot. Which uh, is going to be the sealed cave objective and the earth crystals not objective. Oh, that's a little scary. We, we really don't know when Martin's going to get to that Zot check. He has zero incentive to do it. The only incentive I could think of currently would be you're already going to be in the neighborhood doing music. But other than that, I, I 
I certainly agree with you that Zot is it's a long check. It's something that a lot of people will consider putting off. But I also, if I think Dusty didn't demachine and indeed did do the hook route, I'm going to think that Dusty did Zot. So maybe that goes into the calculus a little bit as well. And Martin already done with his D-Machine grind. We didn't even get to the point of like, you know, talking about the D-Machine, explaining what's going on, because there was plenty enough to talk about with what's going on with Dusty's side. Martin's quite practiced at this D-Machine grind at this point. Gets through it very quickly. Gets his nuke. Gonna warp his way, uh, his happy way out, and then we'll see what direction he wants to go. Yeah, so this is officially the trade-off was... Dusty has now done a Fabul Defense Music and Zot in exchange for Martin getting 820,000 experience. He'll be ahead one or two hook fights probably. They're just into the first hook fight, I would guess, by the time Martin's making his decision as to where to go. I gotta say, though, as chat and as a commentator, this is one of my favorite spots to be in. It just, I just love seeing divergence like this. Let's see what two completely different strategies, you know, how it plays out. Yeah, and I love <clears throat> I love when one runner does the D-Machine because it becomes it, it becomes really sort of tortoise in the hair. Because Dusty is going to, by merit of just speaking underground, will get underground sooner, will get key item checks sooner, but there is a boulder that's just an incredibly powerful yang mixed with nuke mixed with white that is looming uh you know behind dusty in the desert trying to catch up the gunslinger is following right now dusty meanwhile finding a free fight in the kaipo guards this is at a very punchy king queen upland spot doesn't have a j item to take care of them but thankfully looks like the soldiers don't really hit super 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 hard <laughs> I mean, this is this will also be a big question moving forward if, with the seed. Is you know, can we keep this Edward alive? Uh, and if we get Edward below that HP threshold and he runs away, as we're seeing right now with Dusty, this fight one bonus swing from Edward can save Dusty. You know, what would you say, 25, 30 seconds just on this fight? Oh yeah, easily. Edward... <laughs> so I learned recently that Edward only does this auto-hiding thing on fights that don't have the boss bit. So this is kind of the one unfortunate fight where Edward just gets to go like, yeah, no, I'm good. I got hit, nah, I'm out. Like, no, get back in there, you're our best party member. Yeah, we, we, we need you right now, buddy. Every other situation, I mean, 232 from... It, it is a punchy spot, as you said. But okay, Not nearly as punchy as it could be, though. Yeah, like, exactly. This is a rude spot to find. I'm more in my head. I'm like, okay, even those little guys were still hitting Edward for a we're lot. We're still hitting. Uh, yeah. And Eddie's I mean, got to get a lot more punches to the face for the remainder of this seed for Dusty. And here comes the other question. No on this route. All right, what is it? That, there was no delay in that. That oh, there was a delay in that. Okay, so this is the alcohol. Lid. I think Edward's just gonna probably destroy it. There are a number of eggs in this fight. There are actually a couple encounters that could be a bit tricky just because there are multiple actors. Yeah, this but... is gonna be... The, the question is, you want to maintain Eddie's HP going into the next fight? And... Especially... And so this is a... Cutting you off again. This is a... <laughs> Uh, a traditional gauntlet classic in the speed run, right? Or if Edward, you're run buffering uh, Dancing Daggers in the traditional speed run, because if you don't do that, Edward might get hit and then he might hide in subsequent fights, and that just kind of kills your speed run. Might, it's kind of the concern in this fight too, right? Yeah, he's... You know, that one, that one buffered action from the guards could lead to, again, just extending fights. Dusty is a phenomenal runner, not going to wipe to anything gauntlet. I, this isn't, oh no, he didn't save. What if he takes a wipe? This is, how quickly can you get through this boss and the next boss and the next boss? Because you, it, this this is going to be even less of a problem for Martin. This is just going to be a bunch of virus cast and you're done. Yep, definitely well said there. 
Martin, meanwhile, I saw him go in the whale for just a moment after he dropped it down and said, you know what? I'm just gonna step right back out and I'm gonna go do my objective with the twin harp. And that might lead him to do Zod afterwards as well. Yeah, for the sake of wanting this race to be as close and even as possible, we, I am really looking or hoping that we see this play, that we see this Earth Crystal play. But I mean, everything can change in all of these races. It, Martin's gonna have the speed advantage for essentially the, the remainder of the speed, the seed as far as catching up goes, depending on when Dusty and how Dusty decides to grind. But uh, yeah, we get one more run at that beautiful Final Fantasy VII music. Yep, it was either Seto's theme or Great Warrior, one of those two. Enjoy. Gotta cut in right real quick. Martin just set up Medio. I'm thrilled. Yeah, it's honestly a pretty smart choice. There are uh, so many. This is all black magic, as far as like how spell delays work, but basically with so many people on screen, so many characters on screen, the media, I promise you, casts faster than it normally would. And that's as Chad is pointing change. out. Yeah, it, it, it makes sense if you can somehow make sense of all the nonsensical <laughs> things that go along with this like, <laughs> system. Uh, Dusty, meanwhile, underground at 44 and change. Considering you did music and Zot, that is a solid time. And so you, so you get under, not, underground here now, Solaris. Is, what are you going to do? Are you going to shop? Do you have a location in mind? I want to get going immediately. I've got a spoon word. And Dusty Griff, yep, just going to run straight into Dwarf Castle. CPU at... The doll spot is not my favorite thing to see ever. <laughs> it might even be enough to make me want to reset. Not because it's hard, but because it's slow. But otherwise, I like what Dusty Grift is doing. This is what, what would be on my mind. I have power. I just want to go. I don't need to shop. I don't need to bother. Except, you know, finding like hourglasses or whatever. But You run into Dwarf Castle. Dwarf Castle runs right back at you with maybe uh, among the most frustrating fights to see here. Uh, the lack of the back row glitch is going to mean just reduced damage against that back orb. So, I mean, I think I'm going to say what we're all thinking here, and that's just circ up Edward, just circ up Edward and go for it. I agree to an extent. I think that the, the issue is that there is no one else besides Edward who can really get it going. But you do a little bit of damage, maybe, and then circ him now. So you just don't have to deal with the uh, uh, Globe 99 doming your party. I mean, and, if, you know, you're, if you're really be... not if you're really not into it, you could throw a blink on the attacker. I always hate that strategy because then my characters go, "Oh, blink is on the attacker. Let me attack it constantly, endlessly." Why is this thing moving from side to side? Let me hit it. <laughs> Let me hit it as many times as I can until it stops. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you have two blink casters, though. You could do it in perpetuity. 
You could. Now, while that was the contrarian opinion about, you know, I, I think I also would have been Team Yolo, just to circ up. Yeah, someone's gonna die, you pick him back up. It, it's a pretty quick way to get to the fight. You have two white mages. I mean, this, this party right now is a curse string away from being a very bizarre but doable Z fight. Uh, but it's certainly, it's a, it's a great team for blinking and healing up Edward. And Sid is there. Sid's throwing out hits with the Runax. He's in the middle. He gets bonus accuracy. He's hitting for four, sometimes five, even maybe 600. He's I mean, doing his best. <laughs> that's, that's just Sid doing Sid things. Oh my god, game. Do we need another black mage? Dusty says no. That might have been a, a good anchor to pick up. But Dusty not interested. Yeah, that thought also crossed my mind seeing that Rydia. I mean, Dusty might still be hoping it, holding out hopes for a curse ring. And, it, you know, the, it's, the buy flag is not on in here, so none of these decisions are absolute unless you're Martin Broadcloak, in which case... You're, you're pretty much stuck with what you got unless you want to swap out your Tella. Yeah, and chat pointing out something pretty smart. And actually, I want to go back to something chat said earlier as well about not keeping the Tella for Dusty. Uh, that really is a little tempting just to get Warp, because Warp saves you a very good amount of time to get out of the sealed cave, which we know our runners are going to have to do because it's an objective. That is, that is a point that I had not considered i am curious you are going to need it, we are not even with spoonward luca cave is not at the top of my priority yeah, list right now at all. at all with that squad you need you need level you don't want to get stuck down in luca cave and run up against you know rubicante you don't want to, there are a number of bosses that run through my mind that can be punchy or magic you just you just need you need levels, a lot of them, before you're gonna do Luka in this position. But no black mage still means just no warp at all. So, right. I mean, the 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 point of going to Luka later instead of earlier is really more for speed than the danger. Though there are some fights there that are like the Maga Sisters, for instance, because the magic attack spot is incredible, and we don't have a great anchor. Though Rydia could have been a pretty serviceable anchor. I don't know. It's interesting. Dusty, meanwhile, grabs an adamant rock for his troubles from Dwarf Castle, which is not required. Forge is not on the table, but it is another key item towards 10. And Dusty says, you know what? Luca, yeah, that's my that's my jam. I'm going. And Martin now has his Luca key. So the question of, you know, once Martin picked up that hook, once Martin did music, already done the grind, is Zot going to be worth the time? I really like that play. Uh, maybe ask. We might have to ask about it later because I'm wondering if it's it's maybe a defensive play. Because when I do a D machine, like I've said, sometimes I'll say I'm gonna YOLO, I'm gonna go right to the moon, and sometimes I'm gonna say I'm gonna try to catch up with everything I think my opponent did, and and that's what Martin has done so far. Yeah, I agree. Uh, very defensive play by Martin there, saying I know. I know that Dusty did this because I'm almost positive he didn't go do a D-Machine. We had a spoon word. There's kind of no reason to go that way if you don't want to. And so I don't want to lose because I didn't do Zot. Yeah, and I, I believe it was Possum Morpheus in one of the previous races was talking about runners trying to switch up their play style if they think somebody's going to do something or something else. Uh, I wouldn't even really call it a double-edged sword in Dusty's situation, but I think it's pretty easy to know what Dusty is going to be doing in most seeds, and it's everything really quickly and really fast and really well. Uh, so I, I think, you know, if you're going to make not dive the moon for Martin, I, I really like the decision-making that we've seen so far. Now it's, it's still a question of that tortoise and the hare. Luca is not a double, so that benefit of going Luca now instead of later, not really there on the table. A ninja hat is honestly pretty nice for uh, agility manipulation when you don't have like a perfect anchor, but probably not what he wanted to see. And this, this the boss is, though. yeah, this is a big thing because this, this Eddie again in this spot is at risk. 
Uh, and this is not, this is, <clears throat> this is not terrible, but it's also not ideal because you can get blinks up, but blinks are not going to defend your Zerker team against the Antlion, who is dug. I, let's, can, can we get a GG out there for Antlion for just digging all the way as deep as possible into, <laughs> into the earth? You've done it, buddy. That's better than digging as far <laughs> as he could to the moon. <laughs> like, I don't know how that happened. Not, does he hitch a ride on the whale with us and then just burrow his way to, uh, you know, whatever the worst check possible is? I want to see what his spacesuit helmet looks like because his eyes are so spread apart. Like, it, the, the goggles have to... I want two goggles all the way at, like, temple, like, spot where a normal human would have on a helmet. Don't get me uh, Thank you, Scott. on how creepy this sprite is. Uh, okay, I'm going to get started. If you look up Antlion from any future iteration of Final Fantasy IV, I promise you, you will be creeped out. Especially like the PSP version. Nightmare fuel. So they, they decided to just lean even further into this, the goofy yes. character. I like that. I, I wish I had the notes from that meeting. There are honestly a number of creepy skirts. You ever like paid attention to Kinazo for like more than a second? I, I've, I've been forced to, but I don't look at the sprite very often. <laughs> <laughs> that thing has some teeth. Uh, it, it get well done for Dusty. The antlion there, you know, the 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 counter is a physical attack base, but it's also it's once again. Martin's going to be able to just nuke to the ground. Nuke and punch to the ground and white cast if you want. And Martin's going to be able to warp out of here. So this is this is always the game that you I play in my head when, when you have these two sort of opposing things is how much time will Martin make back up? Because right now, obviously, Dusty is running out ahead. But, you know, you just look at which fights are going to be X amount faster for for Martin until Dusty does catch up with those levels. And Martin's already down the hook route, so Dusty is up, Dwarf Castle, and Luca at this point. Yep, and here here we're seeing with the alt gauntlet, uh, you know, Eddie could one-shot those eggs, but then Callum can also quake down these multi-encounters. So, sometimes save, sometimes save, sometimes save. Uh, and then potentially the Zeromus fight, uh, skipping the refill. It, it's so much fun to watch. These are two such just phenomenal runners. Dusty now gonna go check. Uh, this is a pretty common, you know, your typical fight, you know, you're underground. Check out what the Fame Arch freebie is. I don't mind having done Luca and Dwarf because you want to get some levels. I almost would have. I would have thought about doing a siren actually before coming down here. Only, only in that the King and Queen Evelyn, sorry, the King and Queen Fame March bosses are down here, and it's nice to be able to come down here and also feel like you might be able to take some of them on. Baron and, key from the well, freebie. Well, the thing is, the, the the King is a required fight, and this is not. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, this is this is not a party specifically at these levels that I would. You know, I would consider, like you said, a siren, maybe two sirens, maybe top a tower, uh, maybe Sheila one top check if it's tower key, and then a siren, and then come down here because this is a super iffy party for the king spot. For um, I would say a plurality of the bosses you will run into at the king spot. Yeah, it would be nice to have a one and done here. Uh, getting the Baron key. It's a little dangerous, only in that the Baron check is required. I look at your objectives list. Um, <laughs> Baron <laughs> Basement Throne. So that's the Odin Throne. So the Fame Arch is required. It's just nice to be able to not oh. have to double them. However, oh. Dusty doing the like five character, I don't want to do the shuffle, oh. finds the Mom Bomb at the Leviathan spot. <laughs> oh. That's just. That's still no. hard for Martin's team. I mean, you can get blinks up, but yeah. it's doable, but man. I, I so mean, it's kind of, 
That's like the anti-punish. The punish sort of is not having the levels to take on certain fights, but I don't care how many sirens you do. You're not ready for that mom bomb. Well, and the thing with Dusty's team is there's no way you're skipping the explode. And I think Eddie probably dies from the explode, and then you have to eat a bunch of punches from a bunch of little bombs while you're trying to get Eddie up and trying to get Eddie's Earth to blink, and then they might explode. Uh, in the yeah. process of that, that's just, that's, I mean, Dusty with the absolute right call. It's just a hard no. That's going to be a no for me. <laughs> yeah, not a fun time. Now, I like this play quite a bit, actually, not setting up Sheila 1 yet, having other things to do near in close proximity in the Baron castle play. Hopefully into Odin Throne, if he's able to swing it. Might not check it immediately, but um, you're giving yourself more opportunities to get a pan so that when you go do Sheila 1, which is a long, honestly, it's a long check. We don't talk about this very often, but it is a pretty long walk to go down there, talk to Yang, and then get back above ground, fly all the way over to Fabul and check Sheila 1. That is a long check, and being able to do it all in one by getting the pan, I don't blame him. Yeah, my strategy is forget that Sheila 1 exists until I get the pan, and it, it doesn't work all the time, uh, but... It, it is, like you said, it's a really long walk and then you really don't want to run into the pan in what you would have routed anyway after doing Sheila 1. Um, but this is this is actually what I think will be coming up after Luka Cave. Martin is going to be getting new information relative to Dusty because I think Martin's going to take that king and probably the queen spot on his first trip down into the, into the, lane, or into the lane of some of the monsters. Yep, and what they have will absolutely, or could absolutely, change the trajectory of the seed for Martin, depending on what those two checks have. Yeah, what they have, and it's one less walk, one fewer walk, walks? Yep. One, okay, uh, something. One fewer walk. Yeah, one fewer walk. Yep. Okay, status Baratheon. Um, just it, <laughs> into the into the Fey March. Uh, so this is... Just another time save. Uh, FBL in chat, this is a required objective. Uh, objective number one is a sealed cave. Uh, so we are actually, we're just the two tails away from our go mode. We, we don't have the crystal sword, but we have access to the crystal sword and the king. So we're just trying to, uh, maybe we already have to talk here. We just got to get the tails to bend on him. <laughs> Huh? Huh? Uh, yeah, I see what. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> uh, Dusty finding Edge. This is a great character. I don't know what kind of gear we have for him, and <laughs> Dusty says, I have nothing for Edge. Goodbye. <laughs> nothing for him. Uh, and Dusty's already bought 15 sirens, so Edge. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, the ability to steal sirens, eh, not needed so much. Bacchus, if we haven't found Bacchus, being able to steal those is pretty handy. I don't know if he's found that yet or not. I'm not sure if he has. He is running two white mages. Yeah. And well, I mean, you, you only need to cast one right now. I mean, you'd let go of a white mage for uh, an edge, I would, th I would think. I don't know, though. I would consider it right now. I feel like I'm keeping my two white mages. I have 15 sirens in my pocket. I don't think Porum is probably in Dusty's final party, even maybe not Sid. But for me, this is sort of this is this is my best opportunity to utilize Spoonword at low levels is with a blink, two blink and two zero casters. And Dusty is looking for a final party member willing to check that sand ruby. Sees Kane in bed and says, "Yeah, I have nothing for you either. Goodbye." I mean, we have a rune axe, but... That's a rune axe. There was a gun near in the treasury, but I think Dusty is probably... From what we've seen, maybe on the hunt for... No, not a another black mage. Yeah, I was going to say another black... We do have a Rydia. We have Rydia at home. But this I moon think... makes me think... He... Sorry, he, he, he he's making another character check. Yeah, I don't think Dusty has checked the package, so I don't think he knows that Palin is in the seed at that location. So he's going to check the Lunadias. I think you're right. I think this is 
keeping the two white mages. This is looking for that final mage. Yeah, that's a good point. We we never saw Dusty make that package check, which he might have checked and reset, and I might have missed it. But you know, if chat saw for sure, we can get that correction. But he definitely didn't check it when he got it immediately. Martin did. So yeah, ground. I know that Martin did and then came back. I, I don't know about the first thing uh, that Zeno Cat our tracker is saying Dusty never peaked. I'll go with I'll go with Zeno on this oh, one. Oh, who'd we grab? I just missed it. Dusty is in Missidia. Yep. Grabbed uh, yeah. Ridia. All right, there's our final block match. For did, did Dusty's we see party. Hourglasses somewhere? Yes, Hourglasses were from sale. Uh, Fame March or Dwarf Castle, one of those. All right, okay, that mom bomb have, just had, had an elven items. bow, okay. so not a key item. Do it, do it, equip the claw, put on the claw. Is the, the claw the, already the, on? Is the claw the, the, is that the law? The thunder claw. The thunder claw is the law. I think it might just have been equipped all the way throughout this, but Leviathan moved over a spot. About to, about to fall victim to the most overpowered weapon in the game. It, it is a nuke. No, it's not a nuke. It's pocket nuke. Wait for it. Let the let the damage build up. Oh, it's punch. It's punch nuke. Punch nuke. Goodbye, porn. <laughs> Those ice, those ice twos are no joke in that spot. The pass. That is potentially a massive pickup for Martin. This is a one and done. We did not really go out of our way to get that pass, and it saves like three minutes. Depending on when Dusty goes back. If, for instance, his uh, King of Town of Monsters fight is go mode, I don't think he'll even fight the Leviathan spot because he'd just be in go mode at that point. I mean, my thought right now is Dusty's doing this grind with the expectation of probably going and knocking out that king spot before yeah. heading to the moon. Uh, granted, I don't think we've seen our hourglass. I did. I just asked that. Uh, but we we saw hourglasses. They are okay. in the same art shop. Granted, his team. This is eggs are going to be much easier to do with this, this party comp, but. This would be a good time to go back down and take on that mom bomb if you're going to full grind right now. That's a good point. And then he could take on the Leviathan spot because you're yeah. right there and then he'll also get the pass. It would certainly oh. be best for him to do that. Exactly. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm trying to keep things in my head as even as possible. Uh, but we, you know, Dusty could have gone and done top of tower right now instead of doing this grind. So this leads me to believe that he's probably on the way back down to the Fey March before headed up to the moon. And Martin not wanting to be burned by leaving anything untouched, running to the top of tower immediately. I might go to Baron first because it's an objective, but I don't blame him for just like, you know what, I'm here. I just want to see it. When it's nothing, I'll reset and then never come back. Except, you know, the tower key, but... This is uh, this is probably a very short-term memory play because I believe this was the check that burned Martin. It is in their last seed. So very much. This is this is the the whole uh, you know you're you're spinning the roulette wheel like it's been been black three times in a row. It's got to be black the fourth. It's gonna be red the next time. But in, in the reverse, whereas I, I, I can't leave this because this would eat at me for the rest of my life if skipping this both times didn't play. But to, to your point, Solaris, you, you do get two Baron checks and we don't have the tower key yet. So I understand it from Martin's perspective, but from a routing perspective, maybe, maybe knock out Baron, see if you get the pan, see if you get the tower key, and then, and then maybe head back and do this. Yeah, and I believe I saw Martin set up Sheila 1 also. That's another chance at a tower key as well. 
But yeah, it is a bit of a gambler's fallacy to be like, this thing burned me before. <laughs> Let yeah. me make sure I do it so it doesn't burn me again. But and I never point, do that. Oh, I mean, we all do it, right? <laughs> like, let's just be real. <laughs> you know, you get burned like three times, you learn. Even if it, even if what, like when you examine it, it doesn't actually make sense, you still learn. Yeah, and so Xenocat saying from the Keyless Tower, maybe do this before you go down into the Sylph Cave. In then, you know, the defensive play, clear everything, know where everything is. Maybe take a save here. Maybe accidentally land trying to go above ground and take a save. And then check what Sheila 1 is. If it's not the tower key, if it's nothing, reset back to the tower. Uh, but hey, now he knows. Yeah, it's just a legend sword. It's probably best case scenario because you don't have to walk it out. And when Dusty gets a tower key, if he's not in go mode, he'll be incentivized to check the top of tower first and we'll have to walk. So I think that was best case that it was just nothing. Uh, worst case would have been something like the tower key. That actually would have been really funny, but then the tower key having nothing. That's probably worst case. Um, but yeah, that play to me uh, feels very instinctual. I, If Dusty is the methodical, like, just do everything super efficiently kind of runner, Martin, uh, to my mind, is the very uh, instinct-based, leaning into gambles kind of player. Uh, it's something that just makes him incredibly good at this game because he has a very strong instinct about when to do things. Might have done Sheila 1 and then said, you know what? While he's flying, like, you know what? I actually, I don't want to leave Keyless Tower. I'm just going to do it right now. Yeah, and, and you probably know, well, A, he hadn't done the cutscene going back above ground. But then once you're above ground, it makes more sense to just go to Baron. So maybe your thought is, uh, I, I know I'm probably headed to Baron if, if this doesn't pay out. So I, I, I want this information because maybe this is something Dusty did before going, you, you know, for example, into the Fey March, just trying to get levels. So I 100% I, I, I agree. I mean, Martin has, has played a lot of this game, is, is well known for rolling just the rudest possible seeds and grinding through them, uh, is, definitely, is, is definitely thinking through all of these choices. And I'm just sitting up here in the booth <laughs> trying to pick them apart as best I can. Well, I mean, part of my point is it's not even so much like thinking through all the choices. It's like, and this is very much how I play. It's while you're in the moment, it's like almost running on, not on autopilot so much, but just running on instinct. Like not even having a conscious thought about it, but being like, you know what? It just feels right to drop down at this tower and check it at this exact moment. And that's what I'm going to go do. That's kind of what that felt like to me. Uh, <laughs> that's Sheila, fair. by the way, having my favorite. <laughs> Hook route key item. Just like, hey, you wanted to get underground, right? She's, she can, she can, she can play like that. It's, it's nice to know the magma key isn't on the moon. I think for Martin, that's, that's maybe a sigh of relief that okay, uh, you know, I, if I did crystal sword, altar, and you know, all of the moon, I could have gotten both the tails and the magma key. That at least maybe is a little, little sigh of relief. But other than that, yeah, Sheila, thanks. Thanks for taking the hook route. Yang, I see you. I see you. You're in the party right now. You're not down there in the Sylph Cave. You just want to go adventuring with your friends. Here, take this useless key. When Yang is in your party and you go talk to him, is it like a, you know, is, it, is that a self-reflection moment? That's when. That's when. If you're, if you have the Yang sprite up, it actually just automatic, automatically switches to a different sprite. Because Yang's just hiding in the back. And this is our first peek here down at the uh, objective number Balls. three to beat the basement throne. That's free. That'll be free for Dusty too. Dusty having those hourglasses he bought. You can hourglass the back dolls. So that once the front dolls die, they just don't, they don't ever transform. Uh, the other way to kill them is to just to just play. Heard good things about this quake spell. Oof. Double required. There's a rat tail. That's an objective. Both in the Baron Throne and the Rat Tail. So we are we are. One key item from go mode. 
Rat Tail could have it. It would be my favorite, one of my favorite turn-ins <laughs> when you give the Rat Tail. <laughs> and he's like, oh, oh, actually, wait, wait, no, here. Rat, here, have a pink tail. Oh, wait, no, I want that too. Uh, uh, okay, here, <laughs> have this adamant armor instead. I'll give you that. Uh, you give me this, I'll give you that, and then you give me that back, and then and then I'll give you something. A Dusty back down in Cave Eblin. It looked like it went directly, maybe needed more sirens, but then also checked the weapon shop. Might have remembered something in that shop to purchase now that he's got a bit more money. Just, I don't think I saw anything get purchased, but I also saw uh, the, the the first two or three egg fights because he was relying on Spoonward. He ended up with, I, I don't think getting full XP on everybody, but I, I wasn't paying close attention to the the exact level that his characters made it to at the end of at the end of the, the scrambled egg session. Yeah, chat saying it might have been Mage Gear. Also, Dusty remembering that there was a Dwarf Axe for sale at uh, Troya Weapon Shop. That Dwarf Axe with the minus agility on it is a good weapon for Sid to continue to be a reasonable anchor for the party. Yeah, and right now, uh, Martin taking that bonus time to do the D-Machine grind has, has left Martin up uh, that top of tower play. The Baron Basement in both of those uh, Land of Summon Monster bosses in exchange for, I believe he has only not done Dwarf Castle. Uh, that is the one thing that Dusty has done. Yeah, and while Zot was a guaranteed thing for Dusty to have done, like near guarantee as possible, uh, the Dwarf Castle, not quite so much. It really, I mean... Of course, he did end up doing it, and but I guess the point is that Martin hasn't done Dwarf Castle, and we're at a point where he might not, because now you're at a point where, like, well, I only really need the one key item, and I have Dwarf Castle versus the entire moon. Yeah, it's 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 a rough decision to make. We know that Dwarf Castle is not going to be the value that Martin needs. But it, knowing that Martin lost previously at some point by leaving one check on the... Never mind. Never mind. I'm just going to abandon that on it right now. Martin's going up to the moon. Dwarf Castle be damned. Uh, and Dusty is going to make it through these dolls. Dusty... I have to think if you're Dusty, I, I mean... Maybe what your thoughts are, Solaris, but... You want to go do that... that King of Monsters, right? Like that's got to be hanging over my head right now if I'm Dusty. Yes, very much so. I didn't see how far Dusty got through his grind. Like I know he's got Quake on Rydia, but then again, you've got—I mean, you've got Edward and the White Mage. But if he had to short his grind, essentially, it that might be enough to send him to the moon to get the rest of his levels. We'll see what he does. Okay, so chat pointing out in our tracker, Rybon, <clears throat> that the did, did finish out did finish out the grind. Yeah, that I really oh, do want to clear yeah. out that fame march. It was right there. Do where he goes. That would be my thought as well. First, gonna you know make that rat tail turn in, and then after Dusty gets this lovely silent staff, uh, it, we'll see what Dusty does. But Martin blazing ahead right now uh, going to be the first one to clear the crystal sword altar and we are we know where the pink tail isn't uh, we just need to figure out you know what spot it's actually going to show up in it's some crafty moon routing from dusty depending on where we find it maybe could be the answer but but martin just has been relentless this whole seed martin showing that this seed in particular it the, the D machine grind just ended up being faster than getting to 10 key items and doing sirens. Like, just flat out faster, right? Because Dusty still has to do that entire Fey March, and Martin's already here on the moon. Oh, yeah. And and just with. It, you know, the, the reliance on Spoonward. 
it, again, has been been a double-edged sword. It didn't give you the chance to take these Fey March fights the first time down. Uh, he slowed you down on a couple fights where he's your primary damage dealer. But, uh, you know, it, it could come down to, you know, if Dusty, as we pointed out, didn't see that Palom at the package. You know, maybe that was part of your determination of whether I'm going to D-Machine or not. Yeah, both didn't see that Palom at the package and ended up getting a hook before the Darkness Crystal, whereas Martin mm -hmm. getting Darkness immediately from Ordeals first, as part of that mental calculus, really pointed him towards that one direction. So, I mean, just the seed, kind of the choices early game, and how the key items and characters just sort of fell in your lap. It was really interesting. Yeah, both of their both of their routing just on having slightly changed around the ordering, like both of their routing has made perfect sense so far. So about that crystal sword objective. <laughs> you gotta do a nuke check though. You always do a nuke check. Yep. Yep. Even if you're like check. I'm, Yeah. I'm ninety nine percent sure that this isn't gonna hit, but I, I mean what else am I gonna do with Palom right now? Right. And the reason you do that is because there is one spot, and if you're not sure where it is, it is K value up here on the moon. You can actually nuke Val. Everywhere else, she's got that perfect magic defense. This is why we have Yang in the party, though. This is his time to shine. Right here, right now. Yeah, this is 100%. Uh, for any runner, and you know myself included, why you don't just go, okay, I'm going to take all the mages and I'm going to burn everything to the ground. Uh, then you run into Val and you end up trying to aim with Rosa with a bow 45 straight times and then you just forfeit out of the seat and scream into a pillow for a while. I very recently in a practice in a pickup with Martin, Martin and I like to spar pretty frequently in these flags, um, of which he beats me pretty often, by the way. Martin, pretty good at this game. Uh, but we had a seed where Val ended up being a required at uh, the Ogopogo spot. And I, st I just said, YOLO, I'll just take all the mages. I had adamant armor and an Artemis bow, which let me do like a thousand damage per yeah. Zerker swing with a Rosa. It's still not great though, right? Compared to this Yang. Yeah, that would, like my damage guess, even with, you know, plus 30 strength. Would have been around that because the, the tornado form if you don't because his yang is it's all it's all multipliers for yang yep foul i believe always gets five evasion multipliers in tornado form and then or four four or five and then once you pass that you're pretty much good but you need more multipliers more multipliers and dusty does clear both of these, so is going to have that pass in hand. So the other, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say that Dragon Spear just reminds me. The other way of dealing with the Mage Party is if you have a Cane Anchor. The Dragon Spear's got minus ten agility on it, and or if you have a Curse Ring, you could actually take a Cane as an anchor, make him jump a couple times so that Val goes out of Tornado form and you can nuke her down. Didn't really come up this seed, but something to put in your back pocket. Ogo Pogo Val, that would make for a really interesting fight. Yes, <laughs> the punches that you can have to eat. Oh, yeah, it's awful, but it's doable. Yeah. Wake yeah. everybody up. <laughs> doable and doable and fun. Quickly? Yeah. Mm. I wasn't sure what to pit against doable. Uh, and, okay, so Dusty hasn't been shield one. He's going to complete this. As. Yeah, if that if that dwarf check had paid out for Dusty, would still you know be a race. But what Dusty needs to do now is complete that crystal sword and route differently than Martin, um, and that means you know not going down to the ribbon room the way that Martin has right now, because this is you know this is. The thing that you fear when you're racing people as good as this is I am behind, and if I do the exact same thing that they do from here on out, that's just, you know, that's that's going to probably lead to a loss unless somebody makes a mistake. 
and neither of these runners are in a position with the levels and the parties that they have to really run into too much issue moving through the rest of the seed. Yeah, absolutely. Dusty, at this point, probably in his mind that a D-Machine was on the table. Probably in his mind that Martin is pretty likely to have gone for that. Um, and knowing that the, the way the, the, these Earth checks have gone have not been really the most efficient. Just the key items didn't really line up the way you want. I mean, you got to 10 key items, but yeah, um, it's just kind of a lot of slow dynamite. things to do. Yeah. What Dusty has to do now, he's got to get to the moon and go to like cave value or the Mirth on my altar immediately. Yeah, although the ribbon room just gave the pink tail, so boom goes the dynamite. Never oh, mind. That is, that is, uh, that is go mode for Martin. So uh, a clean Z fight away from evening up this series. Um, so Dusty, as much as as you were saying and as, as I was implying before, uh, yeah. would need to have exited out and maybe top down afterwards in some sort of play from being behind. Unfortunately... Now we know that that's, you know, while that would have been the best option to catch up, that option only works if you don't get go mode on your next check. If you're hard. Yeah, that option only worked if, you know, the, the yeah. value wasn't immediately at the bottom. So my thought was, like, you have to do a check that Martin's not going to do and or have to go run for, like, a tower key or a pan and abandon the moon immediately and hope that the pink tail is there versus full clearing the moon so we ended up in a situation where you did not have to full clear the moon this seed. you really just needed by sticking to earth the one key item and that one key item was the pink tail which was just freely available at the bottom of the moon bam get your pink tail get your adamant armor you got your pass we're ready for a fight yeah uh we we're, we don't have to pass or we, we get to go direct, and that would be a curious moon, too, because the tower key came from moon. The pan would either have to come from tower key or another one of those moon checks. So the moon early would have, you know, posed more distractions than it would have actually given you for sure. Yeah, what was on my mind was the moon would have been a great waste of time this seed. <laughs> Sometimes it just plays out that way. I don't know, but imagine if it wasn't. Imagine if it... <laughs> Imagine if it if it had had the value. Imagine. Then you would have been like, how right were you, PK? <laughs> how right were you? Um, but okay, mate, Solaris, explain what's going on here on Martin's screen. All right, we are at the final boss of the game. This is Aromas. We do not randomize his location. It, it's just, you don't want a big bang at like at Lion Cave. No, just, just no. Wyvern can already do that sometimes in rare cases. You don't want it. So... So Rome is always the final boss, and instead of randomizing where he is, as many of us know at this point, we randomize the sprite that he shows up with. So uh, it's one of over 465 and counting at this point sprites that mostly done by Skull Kitty. The question we love to ask is, whose butt, whose butt are we going to kick tonight? We don't randomize Zeromus, we, we randomize how Zeromus is feeling. And we are about to find out <clears throat> the true colors have emerged. I I personally really like the creepy ones. We don't we don't call them out as fun very often, but there are a number <laughs> of them. This, however, <laughs> oh. Oh. You know all those memes. I don't have butt, to ask who is anymore. Butt. Yeah, no. Yeah. You know the, the you know the commentary <laughs> shticks. We don't have to do any of it. It's just it's just there. Skull, this is supposed to be my job. <laughs> this is these this is I don't have anything left to say anymore. Well, this you, you is, did. This is all the questions. You did ask how is he feeling. Well, yeah. How is Bud is on there already though? I, I mean, <laughs> Skull has thought of everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's a Zeromus song. Oh, uh, wonderful. Skull is saying, Zeromus just stole your, your uh... Well, I was gonna Take say, stole your job. joke, and also your job. Uh, this anyway, is... Th yeah, go ahead. This is the part where we would talk about, you know, how you get to this fight, but it's pretty cut and dry. You've got two mages, you're reflecting nukes and whites, Yang's got the Star Veil up. He might punch once or twice to get in there, but... Uh... 
we only have to deal half of Zeromus's hit points because of a refill that doesn't trigger when you do reflective damage, and everyone's really healthy, so this fight is quite safe. Yeah, and with the wall up on Yang, you, you, could, you could throw out a Cure 4 if you need to, Yang. It's going to be the Chemist. Uh, throw in that Cure 2 on the Palom, who only took 206 damage from that Big Bang. Uh, but, I mean, uh, you've got Adam and Palom with incredible amounts of levels. You have Porum. Palom now will, will live another Big Bang without a problem regardless. Uh, the big question is, will we see a second Big Bang, but only for how long the length of the fight would go? Because this is this is a foregone conclusion, particularly with that Cure 3 coming out in Forum as well. Yeah, and even if a second Big Bang comes out, which is unnerfed, so it'll do full spell damage because Zermus won't have been able to uh, counter with a nuke and set the spell damage down in order to do that counter, and then it doesn't get set back up when Big Bang happens. Second Big Bang, full damage, could knock down the Palom and the Porn, but Yang is so healthy, all he'd have to do is just pick Palom up. Somebody throws up a Star Veil, somebody reflects, and then Palom reflects a nuke, and then it's just done anyways. Yeah, but, and speaking of which... GG's to Martin. Yeah, big GG, Martin Broadcloak uh, has, has taken this race, playing behind... Uh, playing from behind, but it, everything is even up, and we are going to have a rubber match, and it sounds like we're joined by Martin Brockclough. GG, congratulations. Huh. Hey, so we get a game three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's exciting. I know. That was the whole goal, right? Hi, yeah. yeah. Well okay, done. so so you finish up your D-Machine grind, right? You have, there are two paths that you can go down. Um, you know, it's, it's, do I follow what I'm pretty sure Dusty did, or a, am I just going to YOLO it straight to the moon? Uh, can you take us through sort of what you were thinking after you got your 900,000 experience? I, I came back to Earth, and it's like, all right, I need to know what the underground access is at this point, because I haven't done it since the mm -hmm. yet. Saw the hook and realized, okay, well... I'm still, if I was playing this straight up, I still do twin hearts, I still do her, and I'm looking for a back machine to short time. Didn't find either. Uh, I found something though, so. I, I did. I did. I, I panicked a little when I went down. I figured Dusty probably would have done the same thing. And then I go down the hook route and see not only are sirens for sale, but oh, the hook route is pretty straightforward. I'm like, oh, great. And I look at my key item count, and I'm at seven. And I'm like, oh, this isn't good. Get underground, start doing things. That's like, oh, look, more key items. Oh, great. I'm going against Dusty, and he has a 10KI siren access. Oh, I'm in trouble. So at that point, it was just literally objective, objective, go blow up everything. Don't get beaten by the top of tower again. And, uh... Yeah, just went from there, and I, I picked Dwarf as my fade, and decided I wasn't going to touch it. So we saw that top of tower decision. I gotta ask, you had set up Sheila 1 and you had Baron on the table. Why top of tower at that moment? What was on your mind? Because of last race. <laughs> and I didn't want to get beaten by it again. <laughs> I'm like, no, there's no, 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 not like this, not again. Like, no, I, I will take the 48 seconds and go up there and do it and uh, no i'm done with this so that is yeah absolutely just the legend and we have and, all done yeah there. ran away so yeah it was it was a really interesting so dusty didn't d machine i would say in part because dusty got the hook before doing ordeals never checked for the package character mm -hmm. so ended up with spoonward and a sid which was enough, you know, to do music and Zot. Yeah. And so by the way that you routed it, you just, like, it was like, oh, this makes perfect sense for Martin, and oh, this makes perfect sense for Dusty. He's found Sirens, he's got a team. Uh, and then you just you just really showed, you know, if you execute really well, sort of like the, the amount of time that you can catch up, because, you know, obviously Dusty was underground sooner than you. Mm -hmm. um, and 
That that bomb bomb. That bomb bomb couldn't have been any more perfectly placed for your team and not Dusty's. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, and depending on what his party comp was, I'm like, well, I'm through this pretty much immediately. So, um, but yeah, no, going back to what you said, I think that big decision was when I saw who was sitting at the package, I'm like, I'm not going to sit through this for a Palom. And then I decide, okay, well, I'm not going to sit through this for a Palom. Let me go look at Baron Inn first and see who's there. Saw the Yang there, and it's like... Yang, both kids, Tella Anchor. Okay, I, I know I know how this plays. So did that, got darkness from ordeals. That's like, great, we're doing this again. So, except this time I actually manipulated the D money fight correctly. So yay. Yay. Yeah, that 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 D machine went quite quickly for you. Also, good memory on uh knowing what those U32s were. So you yeah. right there, pick some up. Yeah, checking that Troy shop. I'm, I'm, I do like having a somewhat clean inventory. So after getting that starting earth crystal, it's like, all right, well, let me go dump all the things I don't need, and maybe see if I can find a dancing dagger to kind of get the seed off and running. Didn't find one, but definitely kept those ether twos in mind. And as soon as I saw darkness, I'm like, okay, quick trip back to Troy. Let's go grab a few of those. I'm gonna need them, and uh, away we go. So while you were on the D machine plan, you got a surprise spoon as a reward out of that Baron Egg. I saw you hover yeah. for a moment. I what was on did. your mind? I yeah, so I I thought about it. I'm like, alright. Spoon word, we all know the power of spoon word. But I had neither part of what I needed for the adamant armor from turning the pink tail. If I had either half, I probably would have kept them and just leaned on it and been like, all right, either half that I need gets me the adamant and basically, you know, makes him nigh unkillable. But, you know, getting that cat claw out of the uh, Chocobo Forest, it's like, wait, I have Thunder, Cat Claw, Yang, like, hmm, this is kind of hard to pass up, especially with the giant HP pool. So, sadly, yes, I did let Edward go. But, uh, I, I think I make that play 10 out of 10 times. Unless I exactly either have the adamant or I have half of what I need to get it. Well, if, if only for that mom bomb fight, you know, mm -hmm. just having that young ended up serving you incredibly well. I, I mean, you only got one point for the Thunderclaw against the life, and you really didn't get to see much Thunderclaw, which I think is a, you know, a, an absolute disaster. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, it was it, the, the the party composition worked out really well for me. It's it's definitely one of my better parties. Um, just exchange Yang out for Edge or Kane or whoever I need, and you know I I I, <laughs> I can run this party and make it do things. And fortunately, it worked out this time. All right, now I've got one final and most important question for you, Martin. Yeah. Will there be victory chicken tonight? Absolutely, that's not even a question. <laughs> I may even go double victory chicken on this one. Nice. Yep, that is a big win. Um, <clears throat> any win over Dusty is something to be incredibly proud of. I, I can speak from experience having only lost to Dusty once in the tournament. Yeah, I, I really wanted game one. You know, the, not missing out on that just because of Baron. I, I knew I had played well the first game and lost to checks, and I figured if I could clean up my act this time around that I had a pretty good shot at taking this to a game three, and yeah, things just kind of worked out. So. And you did. You put on a clinic. You showed this seed, that this seed in particular, when you play it, I'd say optimally, the, mm -hmm. that the D-Machine route was the better one. Yeah. Yeah. Objectively I, so. I was scared when I saw those sirens. I was like... Oh, he's gonna have power. I'm in trouble. Because he can lean on it very well. So, all the credit in the world to Dusty. I, I, about that 55 minute mark, I'm like, uh oh. This is bad. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to game three. Obviously, Dusty is an amazing racer. And yeah, we get to run it back one more time. So, set us up for it. Uh, when, when is game three? Game three, I believe, is 
Saturday at the same time. I believe it's 7 o'clock Eastern. If my memory's correct and survey says. Yeah, no, that looks right. Yeah. So, looking forward to uh, seeing you all one more time. And we do have a, a crack. Boom. rolling this and making me decide on Spoonward and I will see all of you yeah 48 hours from now one more time absolutely looking forward to it it's gonna be so fun to watch all right I, thanks so much Martin I, I hope so thank you guys all right that was Martin Broadcloak our winner for tonight getting us to a game three Game three is great. It's the best thing for uh, for for us as the viewers, right? Maybe maybe not what Dusty wanted, but there'll be one more chance for Dusty to kind of get through. And meanwhile, we are joined by Dusty. GG's Dusty. GG's. So sort of, if you don't mind, uh, take us through like your your early game, sort of the questions you had about your power, and then you know when you decided to do music. You know, you had the darkness crystal, you had a Tella, but, you know, from your routing perspective, the way that you just sort of made your decisions in that seed. Right. Uh, yeah, so I, I just hate D machines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's a couple things I had considered doing at that point, like just going up to the moon and, and doing like a quick, I don't know, uh, real fight or something and potentially doing D machines. But I, 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 I'm probably, I'm definitely way too averse to it because I, I avoid it at all costs, basically. And yeah, this seed certainly handed you the, you know, the situation where you want a D machine the most, where it's a hook route and kind of low early power and a Tela. So yeah, I, I decided not to. I think that kind of was my biggest uh, error this seed. That and not writing down where the dwarf axe was after I had to search for like two minutes. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so but I felt pretty good. I, I felt like my early game was actually pretty decently fast considering the amount of loot I did. Um, but then like as I got that spoon and like my party kind of filled out and I could start Zerk and Eddie and feeling comfortable. Um, it felt like things were moving pretty decently but uh I hit a bit of a slog there after I got through the hook route where it was taking me a long time to get 10 key items and I was really hoping that that would be soon because um, I wanted to like cash in on that Rydia that we saw and get her to nuke, get Eddie stronger so we could just start flying through stuff and yeah that, that all just took longer than I kind of expected so and of course the longer that it takes for you to get the 10 key items and cash in on those signs the the more the better it is to have done d machines or any other grind really earlier in the seed so that kind of hurt a little bit but uh but yeah I, I did not don't regret too much about my play other than like just being so avoiding that d machine play <laughs> which i think would have been nice this time but uh yeah that's that's how the cards play sometimes Well, was it, there any consideration yeah. to? Uh, was there any consideration to uh, keeping that Tella as an anchor over the Sid, or were you pre pretty committed? I mean, we saw you take the Sid, but I'm curious about your kind of thought process I, there. I definitely went through both in my head, and I I almost changed them out again when I went and got ready. I'm like kind of hemmed and hawed about it, and that was kind of why I would like did the whole dwarf axe thing and stuff because I knew I could get Sid to like you know 2200 health area. And he'll still be a good anchor to make everyone RA1 and stuff. And I won't have to worry too much. Um, so that that was mostly it. I was like, I knew my HP pool was going to be awful on the scene, basically. So I was like, I'll, I'll keep him in the back. And he can actually have a little bit of HP and still be potentially useful. But at the end of the day, it didn't really matter all that much. But it was just something like a just in case, almost. I mean... It was really curious just because uh, the way that Martin routed, he skipped Fabul in 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 order to just go straight up ordeals. Right. So didn't have the hook, didn't find that Sid, didn't find the sirens, and there was a Palom at the package. So all the things you did that Martin didn't sort of pointed you down the path of, okay, I have Spoonward. This is enough to go do music. This is enough to go do Zot. I have right. Sid with the Runax. 
Uh, it, it's sort of like you said, then you get underground and you run into the orbs and then, you know, Luca Cave is going to take you a little bit longer just because, you, you know, you're hoping for 10 before you grind, but Luca's required. And then that mom bomb in the fame arch is obviously not going to happen with the party <laughs> when you first went down there. So oh, I mean, as, as D machine averse as well, like you're you're routing all made sense. Uh, I mean, Martin ran that one incredibly, but uh, it, it also it, it didn't structure very well for you know I can sort of creatively get through this until I get to ten. Yeah, that and that that's exactly right, and that that's kind of my hope most of the time is is let me do everything I can with like maybe a small amount of time loss because I don't grind early typically and then do my grind as soon as possible when it opens up and kind of just steamroll from there but this one just didn't it didn't open up like that as soon as I wanted to and even when it did I you know I didn't have the, the palm and stuff I, I leaned on uh, I continued to lean on Spoonword and and whatnot which worked out um, in terms of like getting through the rest of the bosses after that point, but it was still, it still felt kind of slow, like getting through the grind and all that. Yeah. So it was just, it was just one of those things of, you know, the choices I made just, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't regret any of them. And I, I don't even think I played particularly bad in too many instances other than for seeing Torfax again. But, uh, but other than that, I felt, I felt pretty good about it. Um, but like I said, I do think that, I do think, like, if I had my time back, like, yeah, I would just commit to the early D machine, even with the knowledge that I had, because uh, it's like you, you don't know how soon you're going to ten key items, you don't really know what other party members you're going to open up to, all that sort of thing. So, it kind of just makes sense to just go with it. Yeah, and I mean, I just want to point out that there's also a world that you do that D machine, or that Martin does a D machine and goes Moon first instead, because of course, you yeah, have that, that was going to be crystal. My... And this, yeah, and this in this particular seed, it really wouldn't have played out very well. Right. So I mean it, 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 it rando gonna rando right, and it makes a lot of sense to me. I think <laughs> I think you played a really good seed. Yeah, that's it's definitely one of the ones that, uh, and again, like you said, Martin played incredibly well. Uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll watch back the tape and uh, and uh, know that, and I know Martin always plays well. But it's also one of the ones that, like, uh, I I think me and Martin could probably. Um, you know, any given day, one of us can win over the other sort of thing, because, because like that's I think our races are really good and really tight, um, and it is kind of one of those things of the rando gonna get to you sometimes. I think in the first race, the rando got him a little bit, uh, just because of how his route wor worked out, and this guy it kind of happened that way a little bit for me this time. Um, but yeah, certainly some things I can clean up for next time. But yeah, I mean, still a great race. Uh... Yeah, as as Solera said, I was I if I'm ever gonna D machine, I I just immediately go to the moon because it's the only way I can justify doing the D machine. Yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> but uh, uh, again, GG, you get one more shot at Martin. I uh, I believe he said it was on Saturday. Yes, I believe so. I think uh, we're penciled in for Saturday, same time as it was tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, well, any final questions, Solaris? No, that's it for me. Just GG. This was super. Uh, this was a lot of fun to watch from the divergence and the skill level, and it'll be super fun to watch it um, for Game Three as well. Hey, yeah, thanks. you yeah. put on a heck of a show, Dusty. Every hey, time. Thank, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's fun. This has been a really fun tournament, and uh, thank to both of you uh, for commentating to uh, Ribbon and uh, Zeno Cat behind the scenes, and GG's again to Martin. Super fun series so far, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to see uh, see it go to Game Three on Saturday and see what happens. All right. Well, thank you again, Dusty. Um, Solaris, I'm, I, I brought us in, so I'm going to let you take us out. Uh, but I do want to say a big thank you to uh, you specifically, Solaris, for joining me in the booth. And uh, I, I will leave you to take us out. Granted, it looks like Xenocat's typing, so we may or may not have a raid target. Yeah, well, and thank you, of course, for joining me as well. I think I want to say this is our first time doing comps together and i uh unless i i mean i also just have the memory of potato but i enjoyed yeah. it quite a bit and also thank you of course to ribon for tracking and Zeno cat for doing the restream we would not have a restream really without any of us but especially our behind the scene folks who you don't necessarily see a big thank you to them um now this is the end of free enterprise for today but for racing but tomorrow we do have tournament continues 
We have Curios versus Simbu at 8 p.m. Eastern. That'll be on Free Enterprise, our primary channel. Uh, for Free Enterprise, anyways. And we will also on that same day at 9 p.m. Eastern on Free Enterprise 2, we will have Moonblaze Wolf versus Rybon. I believe this is a game two for Kyrios and Simbu. Uh, Moonblaze and Rybon, I actually don't remember if it's game two or three, but regardless, they will be super hype. Definitely check those out. And in the meanwhile, we will in be heading meanwhile. over. Yeah. In the meanwhile, we will be heading over to Escrant, uh, who is running a Pink Puff Async. Uh, so let me see if I can find this Async real quick. Uh, there. <laughs> okay, I have a giant list of them because I could see them all. Um, if you, it, it, some minor spoilers. If you don't want to, uh, if you know you want to do this, this pink puff async. Um, you know, maybe this is your time to dip up. But otherwise, uh, go hang out with us, Grant. It's a great uh, community member. Um, you know, definitely say hi. No spoilers. Uh, hang out, relax, enjoy more free enterprise. But meanwhile, that is it for uh, us on the broadcast tonight. So thank you so much. And thank you to RPG Limit Break, as always, for hosting us.